close your eyes, and give all your attention to the breath. There will be sounds here and there uh, from outside, but you don't have to pay them any attention. You want to follow the breath all the way in, all the way out. The Pali term for this is anupasana. You follow and you watch. And see what the breath does. Because you want to know things that are going on in the mind. And the best way to do that is to have one place to stay focused. And you can't wait for the world to be totally quiet, as the crows are telling you right now. So we have to learn how to develop the perfections of the mind in an imperfect world. If we were to wait for everything to be settled and everything to be fine, there would be no way that we could practice. So in the midst of this imperfect world, we try to perfect the mind. We try to perfect the qualities of determination, patience. Renunciation, we're going to give up all our thoughts that are unrelated to the breath. But that doesn't mean we're going to be deprived. If you stay with the breath continually, it begins to smooth out. And then you can think of that sense of smoothness going through the body. So you can create a sense of well-being inside despite what's going on outside. That's the message of the Buddhist teachings with the Four Noble Truths. The cause of suffering comes from it inside. It doesn't come from outside. There may be bad things happening outside, disturbances, all kinds of trouble happening outside. But you don't have to suffer from that. Your suffering comes from your own lack of skill in how you deal with things. And that lack of skill can be overcome. If we had to wait for everything in the world to be straightened out, we'd die first. Suppose the Buddha had said, okay, I'll wait till the world is straightened out, and then I'll gain awakening. He still wouldn't have gained awakening, and we wouldn't have the Dharma. It's because he was willing to practice in an imperfect world that he found the perfection of the mind, developed the perfections of the mind, and then went beyond them. So you can't tell yourself, well, I'll wait till everything gets settled, and then I'll practice. You practice now, because you need the practice now. Because there are habits in the mind that are creating suffering, and if you don't put an end to them, they're just going to keep on creating suffering. So learn to watch the mind. Because when the mind is with the breath, we're not watching just the breath, we're also watching the mind to make sure it stays here. And if it shows any inkling that it's going to leave, you try to deal with it, either dealing with the mind directly or dealing with the breath. So the mind can settle down more and more securely with the breath. The more stable the mind is here, the more subtle things you're going to see. And you begin to see exactly what the mind is doing that's creating suffering, and you can put a stop to it. As I said, that's the message of the Four Noble Truths, that you can put an end to suffering, and it is within your power. It's not something to be put off until who knows when. It's something you do right now. Why? Because suffering weighs on the mind. And the more quickly you can deal with it, the more effectively you can deal with it, the lighter the mind will be. So keep your focus inside. That's where all the important work has to be done. And when the work is done, then the results are going to appear right there, too. <laughs>